Yes, Chef. With Ryan. It is Tuesday, and for hashtag Daily K, that means Chef Day with Ryan in the studio for Yes Chef, where we talk about Korean cuisine, usually something quite seasonal, and then Ryan will tell you how to make it and bring it into the studio as well, and we'll eat it live on air. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Peter. How you doing? I'm pretty good. You're looking um, fresh, thanks. tailed. Thanks. I actually only got about four or five hours of oh, sleep no. last night. Yeah. Why? Um, I was out doing a really cool project out on the East Coast and in Chuncheon. Oh, nice. Uh, consulting for a couple of little restaurants that are connected to the farmer's market here That's in Seoul. That's cool. Yeah. People doing um, farm to table out there in, in the countryside. Really cool Brilliant. ideas. Like um, just village restaurants kind of thing? Kind or? of one in Yangyang. Beautiful okay. place. On the coast. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Nice. Out on the East Sea. It was yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and then another one in Chuchon where the famous Dot Galbi, the uh, the chicken Ooh, stir fry is. Nice. Um, but we were working on, on things. We got to visit the farms, try the peaches and the uh, different the things that they grow. Yeah, a peach orchard out a near Yangyang. Are peaches Yang. in season now? No, no, absolutely yeah. not. But they okay. had some that they preserved because we got to build a menu around that farm. Okay. And then, and then uh, another place that... Uh, we're building a menu around local ingredients. Right? Nice. Like a fusion menu or like a Korean thing? The, they're asking us for kind of more Western kind of ideas, uh -huh. sure. Um, but, but definitely using the Korean ingredients and often very local, sustainable, organic, uh, you know, all these things that I'm, that I'm kind of, you know, passionate about. So. Yeah, that's great. Because today's hashtag for us, Ryan, is waste, okay? And we've been talking oh. a lot about food waste. There's one restaurant in France, which is apparently like a really nice restaurant. And what they're going to do now is leftover ingredients that they're meant to throw out at the end of the day. They'll cook them up and then give them to the homeless and needy at that's the awesome. end of the day. And like real nice fine dining kind of stuff. So that's cool. That's a brilliant idea. So I wonder what Working in, you know, the food industry, what do you think about waste and, and how do you maybe try to reduce it? I man, I really try to hammer my, my culinary students on, uh -huh. on the idea of that nothing uh, really has to be wasted. You know, if you're cutting the top of a carrot or the, the peel of an onion, that can go into stock. Okay. You know, yeah. and and even when I when I was fortunate enough to meet one of the executive chefs of the one of the biggest hotels in Seoul, mm -hmm. uh, and he was giving a lecture, um, that was one of the things that he talked about. Really, is, is how to be so successful in the business because you really got to save every penny you can. It's, uh -huh. it's a tough business. I right? see. So make use of and, everything. Right. By by, um, you know, some some people even weigh the food waste at the end of the day. Oh, really? In their restaurants and challenge their staff wow. to reduce the amount of food waste That's just amazing. just making people you know conscious of it uh -huh. um, and then w what you're talking about in Europe uh, yeah I've seen places or I've heard of places where they've put fridges out on the street oh yeah I heard that thing and they'll put things out there yeah and it's just you know just take whatever you want sure for for things that are maybe a little bit past what they want to use but still totally you know quality ingredients sure just maybe not as as fresh as they want them to be yeah or maybe they just have too much mm -hmm. and, and put it out there and let folks just kind of take it and take it home yeah we talked about that on the show a while ago as well those okay. public refrigerators right now, which is a great idea because yeah. it keeps the food fresh until someone just opens it up and they can help themselves That's it. it's a wonderful idea isn't it and that system in korea i don't know if your place where you live has it but where they weigh the food waste and then right. you have to pay a fee at the end of the month depending on how much you waste uh, yeah i kind of i think that's kind of brilliant really yeah. it makes so much sense because then if you if you waste more you gotta pay more yeah, yeah it is true but then i see the flip side like in terms of processed food there's not a lot of waste right true so it's kind of could be seen as encouraging let's eat processed food because then there's no waste but oh. if you prepare if you prepare your own fruit and vegetable you know yeah sometimes you peel off the skin right and you've got uh shells and things like this i, I think shells actually should go in the general waste shouldn't they uh, uh, there's some certain rules. They're not supposed to put them in the Korean food food trash waste, but I guess yeah. But um, they go to, they go to the garden. If you're lucky, uh huh. You know what I got? That's, yeah. I just figured I've been living in the same place for for a long time, but I realized that my kitchen sink window, yeah, uh, it goes right out to the veranda. It's mm -hmm. an outdoor veranda. Mm. So finally, I figured out. I put a bin out there, a large bin out there okay. for compost, right? That goes right up to the rooftop garden. Uh huh. So. <clears throat> nowadays or for the past year or so i open up i'm washing dishes you know yeah. and got the food waste 
slide the window open uh-huh. and toss it right out into oh, nice. the bin Straight and then every once in a while go out there and flip it turn it like okay. a compost pile yeah and put some lactobacillus on there to help break it down oh yeah add some and bacteria and stuff yeah oh, yeah it's great. it's what a lot of uh folks do that are that are into composting and whatnot yeah so so that all i don't waste anything That's it goes amazing. right up to the rooftop garden and then gives me back vegetables it makes great year. like soil right for incredible nutrient rich yeah that's fantastic but many people in Korea I guess they don't have that option in right. the west where you've got gardens and stuff that's a big thing isn't it yeah. making your own compost um, fantastic so that's today's hashtag what we're doing for today's yes chef is uh, yeah, something that I've already said is not my favourite oh, no. dish in the world oh, no. I just don't like the look of it rather than the taste the look we're talking about altang right the spicy fish roast soup. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it something that you enjoy, <clears throat> Ryan? It, it is. It's one of the ones that I will order, yeah, more, more than others, I think, yeah. I like the al pap, so the fish oh, egg rice, you yeah. know, that comes in the stone pot, like the ones we've got in the studio right now, and yeah. they put in the fish eggs, and they put in, like, maybe some of the pickled radish, mm-hmm. the kimchi, maybe a bit of seaweed, right, and then right. you mix it all together, and that really pops in your mouth. Yeah, the, they're usually flying fish eggs, or yeah. nao chiao. I love and those. They are. I've always loved those things. That little pop yeah. is great. This, yeah. The the chop up version, where mm-hmm. they just put a load of those eggs on top with the seaweed around it, I love that as well. Me it's one too. of the cheapest ones. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. delicious because you can buy those packs of the Nacho, the flying fish row in the supermarket frozen mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they're so easy to just keep in the fri- that refrigerator. That stuff is really cheap. When I, yeah. when I was in the States and I'd always order that, uh-huh. that sushi like that, yeah. um, <laughs> I thought, oh, this must be so expensive. Yeah, with yeah. all these fish Because you're yeah. paying you're paying for each little bite. <laughs> and then I got to Korea and I saw, what? You can buy a kilo of this stuff for like eight bucks? Yeah, you know, it's make so cheap, isn't it? Mm. But that's not the same as these eggs, is it? Well, in the <clears throat> you could use just about any kind of roe in uh-huh. an altang. Um, but but usually, and in this case, it's uh, pollock roe okay. or, and, and or cod roe. Right. Um, and sometimes cod milt, you know, the... Uh, the reproductive, reproductive organs, organs of a fish of right? a male fish of a male fish yeah. i hadn't heard that word before today milt milt yeah that's yep, what you yep, call yep. it yeah i didn't yep. even know what it looked like but you explained that the milt that you often find in outtang is the kind of thing that looks like a bit like a brain right 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 it's uh <laughs> a lot of people often think it's something else in the fish you know but uh, i totally but did yeah. Milt, yeah i never knew okay and that's known as milt yeah. uh but the row in the altang isn't this the one that kind of looks like a finger i was saying to you yeah earlier. it's it's uh it's an egg sac yeah. and and um i mean you can cut them and put them in these don't look like fingers now you want to see yes please <laughs> I, i'll be glad if they don't He's look not, like fingers Peter's not excited about this today <laughs> all right here okay. we go let's take a look all right, let's fish something out of here. Okay, yeah. so they've been all cut up, right? Right, right, right. So right, right. I just don't really like this. That why are they all together like that? Why are they all stuck together? So they're in the egg sac, but you kind of cut it Whoa. open, but they don't like fall apart or anything, do they? They they mulch together. Um, I'll have to get a uh, biology professor to give you an explanation, Peter, as to why they hold together like that. Yeah, but, because uh, the flying fish row, they are like individual eggs, <clears throat> although they kind these of... These will do the same thing. It's okay. just that they were cooked in, uh-huh. in pieces. I you see. You can break them up as well. Yeah, yeah, then I think I'd like it if they were like all floating around there. Oh. But they're always together like this in the old tongue. <laughs> yes, I am. And usually in the egg sac that sometimes does look like a long finger. Mm-hmm. And that just really puts me off because you kind of have to break it with your spoon and put it in your yeah, mouth. Yeah. Um What about the what about the jokgal stuff, the salted ones? Do you like that? No, my mum loves it. That's me quite too. expensive as well. It can right? be. They're cured. Uh-huh. They're salted yet. Yeah, go for it, Peter. Are you sure? Go for it, man. Okay. Um, all right. I will go for this. You you go for it first, right? <laughs> this is, uh, yes. We can try the broth first. All right. Wanna, can I do the broth first? Like. Okay. And then <clears throat> can you explain mm. vaguely what this broth is mm. then? It looks mm-hmm. like what we see often, the spicy kind of broth, right? Oh, this is really good. Um, the the unique part mm. about Altang is that mm-hmm. it's... It's a little sweeter. The uh, broth is delicious. You're right, a little yeah. bit sweeter. Still a bit of a kick to it, definitely. Uh, for many, uh, I guess, visitors mm. to Korea who are not used to spicy food, they mm. might say it's very spicy. But there is a little sweetness in that, a little depth to it. Yes, and that's, nice. that's coming from the roe and, and from the radish uh-huh. and a little onion too. 
But uh, but yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to get a little bit of mm -hmm. uh, minced garlic and a little bit of oil in the bottom of maybe even one of these or a uh -huh. bigger heavy bottom pot. <clears throat> then you're going to put your radish in, like a daikon radish slice, and stir fry that a little bit. And then you can add on stock, but you really don't have to for this. Okay. Um, you can take a, a piece of the kelp, the dried kelp, the, yep. the dashi, and put that there with water and let it boil long enough for the radish to cook. <coughs> and okay. then you're going to add in maybe chopped scallion or, in this case, you know the, the Korean leeks. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to put in, um, let's see, uh, some onion as well. Um, and then you've got all the roe that goes in uh, toward closer to the end. You don't have to put it in all the time. Uh -huh. So wait until the radish is nice and soft. Yeah. And then you can put in the bean sprouts. And in this case, we've got our topic from last week. Yeah. The, uh, the mung beans. The soybean soy sprouts. Beans. But often people use mung bean sprouts in okay. this dish as well. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And then row in. Um, and and then how long do you have to cook it after you put the row in? Um, I would say, well, it depends on how much you've got in there, but, yeah. but I would say just about 10 minutes. Okay. Usually. Um, and of course there's gochujang mm -hmm. and red pepper flakes as well. Which give it the um, color, right? And, and a the, little soy, the spice, yeah. right? A little bit of soy. The broth um, is delicious. I'm going to wait did until... Did you try the egg? No, you didn't. No, I'm going to wait until after the song break. I'm going to build up my courage to eat the fish egg sack, uh, which yeah, I just, from what I remember about the texture... It's not the same as the flying fish row, which is usually, I pop, don't know, pop, pop, more pop-pop. Pop. Is, is it like, it's not like that, right? No, it's not. It's, it's more mulchy from what I remember. So, well, okay. Well, it's, it's a lot of really good, healthy protein. Yeah. I'm sure it is healthy, yeah. A lot of things that I don't like are healthy. But anyway, listeners out there, tell us, do you have any dishes that use fish row in your country or culture or that maybe your family made? And we'll read out your messages in part two. And I promise I will try this in part two after some lead apple. This is Who Are You? We are back with Yes Chef part two, and we are talking about fish roe spicy soup al tang mm. here in korea uh, i've promised everyone that i'm gonna i'm gonna eat it all right let's just get it over and done with um i'm not a fan of the egg sacs like the eggs themselves yeah that's great but the egg mm. sacs oh mm. i don't know okay let's give it a try let's give it a try with the did you say it's the bean sprouts the soybeans yes right? there's, there's some soybean sprouts so they give there. a bit of crunch to they do. the different texture of the fish egg you can do it peter no, he's mm. not. Mm. Not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. Because <clears throat> they've already been cut up. Right. I think psychologically it's better for me. And the taste... Because <laughs> mm, they don't look like fingers. Yeah. But the taste, I don't know, it's not like full of flavour that's different from the, the soup, right? They've added the sweetness to it. Yeah. But I don't know what the eggs actually have in terms of flavour. It's more like a texture thing. Well, and it's really good for you. It's a lot of protein. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's kind of like mm, falling apart in your mouth when you bite into it because mm -hmm. it's lots of individual eggs in that sack, right? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I could do that. Not I could too eat bad. This. If, yeah. I, if I was thinking, yeah, let's be healthy. I, I've seen Peter's reaction on things that he didn't uh, like too much. And yeah. yeah, I have to say you didn't, no. you didn't make that face. Because so, this yeah. broth as well is so good. Mm. Like mm. really... With a bowl of rice. It's, it's really hard. That would be yeah. amazing. Uh, we got some messages to read out as well. Uh, let's see. We've got Roz here in the US says, um, so fish row soup. That sounds um, different. Would this <laughs> row taste like mullet row? Is that something that's big in the US? Mullet row. We also y use it here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mullet, the type of fish, mullet. Uh-huh. But what, what do we use the row for? Just for... The same kind of thing, dishes. or it'll be like jokal, it'll be salted. But, uh -huh. but yes, you can use uh, mullet roe. Um, you In know, here? Yeah, of course, yeah? of course. Okay. Yeah, you can make altang with all kinds of different roe. Mm -hmm. um, another kind of fun thing to do with roe is if you make a little brine for it. Yeah. And salt it uh, and sugar it and maybe get some lemon in there and brine it overnight. And then if you have access to a smoker, you could low temperature, like uh, 70 degrees Celsius, smoke it. Oh, wow. And, or just in an oven, you uh -huh. know, a lower temperature. And and it becomes almost like a little like a little sweet, salty, jerky really? kind of thing. Yeah, not chewy, uh -huh. but, but it's it's tougher. 
and it's it's such a nice snack. But it's got to be in like its little sacks, right? Yes, you that's true. You can't do it like individually. That's true. Your favorite. Yeah. So, so no. So with those <laughs> flying fish eggs, or also sometimes you see the yana al, the oh, salmon yeah. eggs, which yeah. are bigger, mm-hmm. and they've got a lot of liquid inside. I like those at the chop up places yeah. as well. Even though yeah. that's a bit weird, it popping in my mouth. I do like that. Yeah. So with those eggs, were they in a sack and they've been taken out? Yes. Oh, I see. Yes. And yes, then yes. they look much nicer for me. Yeah. This time last year, I was. Uh, fishing on a river uh, mm-hmm. in Arkansas with okay. my whole family. Yeah. And I caught a trout, a rainbow trout wow. that was full of roe. Ooh. And I kind of freaked out my family a little bit. Not too bad. I got them all <laughs> to try it. I got everybody to try it. The roe. But yeah. So I just took it and I kind of brined it for a little bit to get away the fishiness of uh-huh. it a little. And then, you know, it's it's really good. It has that pop. They're kind of like the the salmon roe, just a little bit smaller. Okay. And it's so good. You really? salt those things. Yeah. And, oh, man, it's a delicacy. It's yeah, I, I do enjoy those salmon eggs, but then I read Finding Nemo to my son. And, you know, it's the little <laughs> fish egg at the start of the story. It looks the same. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, little Nemos. Uh, but you can't think like that when you're eating food, can you? Uh, Siska from Indonesia says, um, good luck for the consulting in Yang Yang. Uh, spicy fish soup. It's great, but I think Peter doesn't like it. My question is, on a level of 1 to 10, what is the spiciness level of this soup or compared to other Korean dishes? Okay. On a level of one to ten, where ten is like bull duck ball, okay, you know, yeah. like the the spicy chicken feet, yeah, um, and okay, I would put it at what? What do you think? Maybe a a six. It's seven? definitely over five. Yeah, I'd say yeah. maybe a seven because I can okay. still feel that in my mouth despite mm-hmm. having had it maybe a couple of minutes ago. You know, it yeah. still lingers, but the sweetness really kind of levels it out a it bit. Does. You're right, and yeah. that's just a natural sweetness from the row. From from the row, from the the, oh, radish, the radish as well, okay. and the onion. Yeah, ah, it's delicious. And the and the gochujang, you know, the red pepper paste, it has a little sweetness to it too. So yeah, yeah. and Siska goes on to say the row is kind of big. What fish did you say it was from? The pollock. Pollock. Or the yeah. cod it could be as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said, I like fish roe when it's fried. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. How can you mm-hmm. fry it? In the sack as it well. It pops a lot. Okay. Like when you're doing the You definitely want to put a screen over it or something. To um, stop it like popping all over the place. I never waste it. You know, and uh, yeah. I mean, you can salt it uh-huh. and then use it to flavor stocks. Yeah. You can cook it right up, fry it, and it's amazing. A fried roe. I've never tried that. That sounds maybe more up my alley. Annie from Singapore says, Hello, Chef Ryan and Peter. I like the fish roe. I've never tried the altang before, though. I will give it a try if I have a chance. And I also like the deep fried fish roe. Deep fried? So putting it in like a batter and something. Would oh, that, yeah. I guess it would have a lot of pop inside there. It, it does pop like crazy. Uh, another time fishing on the same river. Uh-huh. Um, this is before I was... Um, not afraid to eat them raw, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, our, our fishing guide was uh putting them right into hot oil uh-huh. and frying them up, and they're popping like crazy, but they're really good. Wow, yeah. and then you just take them out and eat them that's it with nothing, yeah. no sauce or anything. Oh, you could put a little salt on there, that's all mm-hmm. you need. Okay, so there's a lot of dishes that we've mentioned today made with these uh row, right? Including the chokka that you mentioned earlier, known as Myeongnan chad. Mm. Have you seen at some of the places, uh, some of the convenience stores? You know they've got the triangle kimbaps, which are the economical way to right. eat lunch for like 900 won or something. <laughs> right, right, right. They've got Myeongnan chad kimbaps. Whoa. Have you tried it? With cream as well. Wow. Yeah, so it's like cream Myeongnan chad. That sounds tastes, pretty good. It tastes really good because it's not in the sack anymore in there. It's just yeah. the eggs in the middle. And uh, yeah, oh, it's one of my Peter's favorite. Oh, Peter's so busy. He's always <laughs> eating. The oh. triangle kimbaps. No, but <clears> I love them. They've got some amazing ones. And that was one of the newer creations. And I've got to say, yeah, one of my favorites. Uh, so this is really good for your health, right? That's what we're saying. Lots of protein. Absolutely. So if you're maybe on a bit of a diet, you could uh, check this out, right? Uh, In part three of the show, we're going to do what's in your fridge. So tell us your ingredients, what you've got, and Chef Ryan will come up with some delicious recipes that you can try out, uh, hopefully at home, and then post up the photos. Ying Yin has said from Malaysia, I've eaten milt before ugh, at a Japanese food review, and it's called shirako in Japanese. Mm -hmm. I drenched it in soy sauce. 
it's really an acquired taste. When I was an exchange <laughs> student in Japan, my host mum made me get the row of the sacks. It's so slimy and sticky from the actual fish when it's uncooked. It was not a good experience. Is it easy to get those sacks out intact? Is there like a trick to it? Or Well, that's, you know, how good are you at filleting the fish or uh-huh. gutting the fish? Because, you know, it's, it is pretty, they're, it's a thin membrane. Mm-hmm. So I, I'll... I'm often doing herring, and yep. I'm taking the row out of herring because uh-huh. I'm I like to pickle herring, okay, or, or smoke it, and and yeah, you know, one out of ten or two out of ten, I'll I'll puncture that. Um, and that then will they side. come flying out, or are they like intact? No, in there? I mean they kind of though you know they can kind of come out. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon anyway. I just wanted to ask. Ying Ying goes on to say, for the hashtag waste, hotel and restaurant owners I've talked to said even though they want to donate the leftovers, they're afraid of anything like food poisoning and people may take advantage and sue the owners as it has happened before. I hate wasting food and would pack food that I couldn't finish and eat it later. So is that the thing? That's so, that's so true because the, the insurance uh, issues, yeah. Uh-huh. But there there are these groups like Meals on Wheels. I used to I used to take leftovers from when I was running this big kitchen back in, in Texas. Yeah. I used to take leftovers, you know, just just kilos and kilos of things. Uh-huh. You know, because we would do big events. And if, if the numbers, like say they tell you that 2,000 people are coming. Sure. And then only 1,800 show up, you got food for 200 people yeah. laying around so i would take it down to like meals on wheels okay and then they would repackage it and they assumed all the responsibility somehow that organization because really? it's a non-profit they you know we didn't have to worry too much about that that's good but just going and giving it to people yeah you, you can be a bit worried you could yeah. you could uh, yeah if somebody really want i guess if they wanted to like abuse that system or um, even yeah. genuinely just get sick right and then the yeah. worst could happen yeah. will from canada earlier told us that there is legislation in many states where if you give leftovers and you're not deliberately trying to poison anyone then okay. you're covered like people can't sue you he said in many mm. of the north american states now so yeah. it there is a path there for restaurants and supermarkets to do it but still many are like dragging their heels it would be wonderful because mm. they say a third of all food is wasted each oh, year yeah. like billions of tons it's crazy yeah. isn't it um, yeah. so we'll be back in part three uh, we've talked all about fish roe soup today called altang it's spicy it's a delicious broth um, I'm not sure about the egg sac still but anyway you can check out this video on YouTube in the next couple of days if you are watching on YouTube then why don't you listen to hashtag daily K every single day from 9am KST till 11 and you can watch uh, us talk about all sorts of different topics as well. Time for some Mamma Moo now. This one's love. We are back for part three of Yes Chef. Ryan making me very jealous about his tales in Kangwondo province and buying things that I want to eat. Oh. Can we not do that next week? Some Korean hanu. Okay, <laughs> yeah. let's do it. Let's do some high quality Korean beef that I absolutely adore. That would be nice, wouldn't it? We mm. haven't really done a beef thing on the show yet, have we? There you go. Yeah, let's there go out go. with Plant a bang. The seeds. I think our budget might only cover like five grams each. But anyway, I will cherish that. I'm absolutely a massive fan of Korean beef. My favourite, I think, in the world. I'm sure you know, there's great beef from Japan as well that's highly marbled. But from what I've tried... Fried. Hanu is just delicious. It is so tender. Yeah. It's and amazing. melts anyway. the fat in it as well. I just love it. Love it, love it. Anyway, um, wait, we've got a message from Roz before we get into what's in your fridge from the US. Uh, so we talked about food waste earlier. At D Company, the big one that you work at, the animation company with the theme park, mm. we do two things with food waste. Those items that have not been served, they get sent to feed the homeless. Oh, great. And anything that has been served or is spoiled, we send it to a food recycling facility and turn it into green energy. Then we purchase that energy and use it to run the rides and power the park. That's brilliant. (laughs) That's cool. Running on food waste. Yeah, Yeah, biofuels is a big thing, isn't it? Um, And using the food waste and other waste as well to power or give you energy. That could be a thing for places which generate a lot of food waste maybe they could have like a little food waste generator you know there's a, there's a place in chicago that um they they have this big tank mm-hmm. and it collects all of the gases that are released in the decomposition process uh-huh. from the food waste oh great and and then that 
goes to a generator uh-huh. that then, you know, they, they just recycle all this energy through That's the whole place. Brilliant. It goes to aquaponics for the fish that uh-huh. they're raising. It goes to like a room for growing mushrooms. It nice. powers the building. I mean, it's just... Yeah, it is doable, isn't it? I mean, sometimes yeah. it's a hassle to get it started. But once right. it's in place, you're saving money as well as the environment. It's win-win for everyone, Big isn't it? Time, yeah. uh, Gordon just got in touch from the US, says, When I was manager of a chain Mexican food restaurant, the one named after a type of pepper... The chip one. Okay. I don't know which one you're talking about, but anyway. (laughs) uh, Anyways, we always donated the leftover meats and beans at the end of the night to local food shelves and churches. Not all restaurants do it, though, and not all of the chain ones do it either. I'm Mm. sure it's great, though, also for your PR, you know, if you... Sure, say, sure. look, we're doing it. this for people in need. Uh, yeah. Really, I wish more and more restaurants would get on board doing that, as well as supermarkets, too, if yeah. they can get around the, those legal issues, I suppose. All right, what's cool. in your fridge? We look at our listener fridges, and Chef Ryan comes up with some delightful recipes. Audrey from France always impresses us with the photos afterwards. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, does she ever. Yeah, really <laughs> talented. This is this is cool. And and always a remarkable fridge. I mean, there's fresh pasta. Fresh pasta. How many people keep fresh pasta around? You know, in the UK, supermarkets sell a lot of fresh pasta nowadays. That's I true. haven't seen it very frequently in Korea, right? It's hard to come by. It. Well, the kalguksu, you can buy those. Okay, fresh yeah. yeah. That's a kind of Korean pasta, isn't it? Right, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> um, lots of cool stuff in your fridge here, Audrey. We've got... We got tuna, um, pork loin, spianata uh, picante. It's like a, a cured, a cured meat, um, like a cure, kind of like a chorizo. A oh, bit, yeah. nice. Um, sweet potato, uh, celerac, button mushrooms, mm-hmm. sweet peppers, zucchini, ginger, lime, uh, kiwi, fresh pasta, cheese, single cream milk, herbs and spices. Ooh la la. Garlic, onions, shallots. I love using shallots and pistachios. Are they um, easy to find here? Shall yes, you really? can find them in all of the Chinese markets. Oh, I see. oh, at the Chinese markets. Yeah. that's a good tip, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Um, now, this is uh, okay. I've never done this before, Audrey, but I know it would work really well, and I'm sure you could do a really great job with it. Um, I'm not sure what kind of herbs you have, but. Uh, it doesn't matter quite so much. I would take the tuna, the pistachios, and the herbs and do like a pistachio herb pesto. Um, like crust the tuna and then sear that in. And I like my tuna pretty raw. Yeah, I don't <clears> like me. cooked tuna. It gets, yeah. Uh, it just yeah. loses its appeal. You don't like fish roe when it's cooked, but yeah. you don't like... Tuna when it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I think with a lot of seafood, raw the better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or definitely not overcooked. Right? Uh, no, no. I hate <laughs> it when tuna gets overcooked. Okay, but but yeah, what I would do is is crush up the pistachios, toast them a little bit. Uh-huh. You know, get those natural oils to come to the surface. Um, get the herbs in there, and, and you know, if you've got some, li- I don't see lemons around, but if you've got some citrus, lime, mm-hmm. or lemon, or or even orange zest would be amazing with that. Oh, that would be so good with the pistachio orange zest. The herbs, maybe if you had parsley or or a little bit of rosemary. Don't go overboard on the rosemary; it's so strong. Mm-hmm. But get those herbs. You know, what would really be nice is if you had coriander or cilantro in that pistachio coriander orange zest with a um, like a a crust on that tuna then seared in and oh that would be really nice i'm not a yeah. fan of pesto usually but with pistachios in i think that would be delicious yeah. what i would recommend for audrey is just uh it's called pistachios you just put a bit of salt on them <laughs> delicious they're just so good by they themselves are, they really are so so good oh. and in the uk you get them still in their shells most of the time uh-huh. and they're salted already as yeah. well and just popping them out of the shells is so fun for kids yeah. and they taste so addictive <laughs> oh i love it uh, audrey remember last week did you see the photo ryan of what she made the yeah. cured half yeah, cured duck breast yeah. It looks like a restaurant plate it's, it's has been beautiful. served, right? It's beautiful, yeah. And you know, you were telling me, and I was not that aware that you can eat duck quite rare. Mm-hmm. It yeah. looks really rare there, and and that's totally fine for the breast part, right? Absolutely, right. Oh, yeah. It looks delicious. It almost yeah. looks like a steak, doesn't well, it? Well, I think also that the ducks there eat a different diet uh-huh. than what I mean. If they're being uh, fed a lot to make foie gras, yeah, the the, go- the liver, yeah, then then they're on a different kind of diet because uh-huh. the flesh does look different color than what we have here. 
Yeah, it's a lot darker it's really, here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different. So. Yeah. So there, yeah, the diet definitely depends, and then the species of duck may not be exactly the same too, right? So, That's true. But but yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful red color, and and just with looks the fresh amazing. fennel salad as well. That's it. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go to your restaurant, Audrey. You can charge me whatever you like. <laughs> duck here in Korea, like the main way I ever see it eaten or sold in the supermarkets is the smoked variety, right? Right. right the right. hunjeori, and then yeah. it's already sliced sliced a lot of the mm-hmm. time and you and buy it great. in these packs i mean it's great and kids love to eat it mm-hmm. but it's harder for me to find just the duck n- unsmoked in just general supermarkets well the, the reason for that i think is because you know after you you've salted this thing and you've preserved it a little bit and smoked it mm. then it has a much longer shelf life yeah with, with <laughs> raw poultry you just can't keep it around very long so that's true maybe yeah. there's not a big enough demand at the moment yeah. uh, we got another one from siska in indonesia yeah siska's got potato eggs corn water pumpkin uh, that's like a kind of like a squash and carrot milk chocolate banana you always have chocolates and bananas around and <laughs> and fish and the fish is like a samchi or a Spanish mackerel okay okay and uh, I got an idea for you have you ever mm. done a have you ever done a salt bake or salt have you ever bake. seen a salt bake no, I think I've heard about it where you salt the, uh, like, around the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a lot of salt, but salt's cheap. It's uh-huh. easy to come by. So if you take egg whites, not the yolks, just take the egg whites, whip them up into um, medium peaks. So so whisk them until they get a little firm. Not so firm that it's like a meringue, uh-huh. but, but almost there. And then put in a ton of salt, okay? Like, like if you had five egg whites... We're talking like 500 grams of salt, maybe wow. even a little bit more. Okay. And it really depends on how big the fish is. Okay. Because if, if your fish is, you know, more than, you know, a kilo, I mean, samchi or, or Spanish mackerel are pretty long. Sure. So what you've got to do is after you com- combine this salt and egg white mixture, uh-huh. you pack it over the entire fish. Okay. So you put your fish um, down on a pan. You'll yep. gut it, of course. You'll, you can, you'll gut it. Maybe stuff it full of lemon and, and herbs inside yep, yep. Or, or season it a little bit. Yeah. But then cover the whole thing with this salt and egg white mixture. Completely. Completely. Okay. Seal it up. Some You can leave the head undone because yeah. it's a presentation thing. You can see the, the fish's head there. But you can just cover the whole thing up yeah. and then put it into a super hot oven for just about 10, 15 minutes. Does it not get super salty then? No, it doesn't. When you when you um, take it out of the oven, yeah. it'll be a little bit browned, uh-huh. okay? And then you just kind of crack, you know, it'll crack in a big piece. You pull it off. Oh, so that salt doesn't all go into the fish, No, right? not at okay. all. It's just sealing it all in there. So know. all the, whatever you put in there, if it's lemon or garlic or whatever may be inside the fish, herbs, mm-hmm. uh, that's all sealed in there. Okay. No steam can escape. I see. Okay? So it's packed in, and then you take that off. It's got to be it's, so moist inside, it's a lot, right? Right, exactly. And wow. it's just gorgeous. It's a cool presentation. People get a kick out of it because, yeah. you know, it's in this in this shell, you know, and then you... You can do that for pretty much any fish. Uh, it's like I've intact. used I've used a lot of different fish. The fish does need to be skin on. That's uh-huh. really important or else it will get way too salty. Yeah. Um, but the skin is, is doesn't get... The skin itself doesn't get super salty because it doesn't absorb as, as much as like the flesh would. So. Oh, nice! I, I yeah. want to try that now, just to see it and show my kids like cracking it. They off. would love it. Yeah. They would really love it. Yeah. All right, a salt bait. Thank you yeah. for that, Ryan, and thank you. Yes, for the Altan. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to eat the rest of Peter's. Over you can here. eat those precious eggs, indeedy. Uh, we'll see you again next Tuesday. Good deal, man. All right, we're gonna play some Honey Jin featuring Sojong. This is Deep Inside.